Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible, Zaret, for God to lie. It's impossible. Well, today I want to talk to you about one of the greatest weapons that the church has and sadly, the church is not necessarily, as a whole, using the weapon. And, you know, the Bible says the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That means they're not fleshly. They're not, they're not something that you go to school and learn. They're not something that you, uh, I can't say that you don't develop because we do spiritually, but th they're not something that you can just turn on and turn off. But these weapons are available for every born-again believer. And there's nine of them. There's nine of these weapons. And they are called the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of the church doesn't want to have anything to do with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I remember getting ready to do another uh, television interview. And the, the person, the, the gentleman doing the interview, looked over at me and he, before we started and he Real nervously, he said, are you going to speak in tongues during the interview? I think he was really nervous. He'd probably been pondering that all day. I told him no. Because the gifts are subject to the prophet. And you can decide whether or not you're going to quench the Holy Spirit or if it's wisdom to walk in the things of the Spirit. You know, the Bible says you don't, you don't cast your pearl before swine. You don't, you don't take God's gifts and just waste them foolishly. But all too often, we don't receive everything that we need to receive because we've been taught that the gifts of the Holy Spirit have passed away. They're not available for the church today. I remember when I was in college, one of my professors, uh, he, he said, the gifts of the Holy Spirit passed away during the transitional period. Well, there is no transitional period in the Bible. I mean, it's like he just made it up. And you'll find that a lot of things that you hear uh, in some Bible schools and, and you hear in some sermons are, are just kind of made up because... That's the way they believe, and, and it's sad, but when people who have a platform, you know, like me, and you say something, there's a certain number of people that check you out, but there's a, also a certain number of people that just swallow it, hook, line, and sinker, because the person in authority said it. Well, let me tell you something that a person in authority is getting ready to say, but it's true. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. They were explained in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and it was during the church age that he wrote the letter, and these gifts are for the church today just as much as they were for the church then, and if we would operate in these gifts and allow the Holy Spirit to move through us with these gifts, then a lot of our problems would be solved and so take your Bibles right now and let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're just going to look at these gifts first. Now, once again, not for the purpose of selling product, but just because there isn't enough time to explain all of this. Now, there was a time when I took 10 or 20 weeks and taught the Holy Spirit. And then we compiled all of that and put it into a book. It's called Unlocking the Mysteries of the Holy Spirit. There is so much we're not going to be able to get to today. And if you want a deeper study, everything is backed up with Scripture. There's nothing that's just, well, I think this is the way it is. No, we know what God's Word says. We know what His Word says. And so we should not deny what His Word says. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. 
But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Here is the thing. When the Holy Spirit is moving, it is for the profit of all who are there when the Holy Spirit moves. It's when something happens in a church service, in a Bible study, at work, these gifts are not restricted to the church service. A lot of times people think, well, I need to go to church so that we can move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. No, you can move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your home. You can move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit at work. You say, well, it'll embarrass me. No, no. The Holy Spirit is not going to do things just to embarrass you or try to make you look odd. The Holy Spirit is going to move so that God is glorified and that the Son is glorified. And so that people's lives get changed and people's bodies get healed and their hearts get healed. The Holy Spirit moves for the benefit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts, notice that's plural, Gifts of healings, plural, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Now, now listen to me. Miracles did not pass away when the Bible got published. Miracles, the working of miracles, is still available for the church. When you get your back up against the wall and you say, nothing can help me, I need a miracle, Miracles do exist, and they do happen. But I'm going to tell you something about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and about all the power of God. Nothing happens unless you believe it. All of the gifts of God can be received by those who believe. Without belief, nothing happens. I've had people tell me, I've gone to this church for 45 or 50 years, and I've never seen the Holy Spirit move once. Well, do you believe in it? No, the pastor preaches against it, and we, none of us believe it. Well, then that's why. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. This is not the translation of tongues. It's the interpretation of tongues. There is a difference. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Now, I believe that he wills to distribute much more than most people's will to receive is. If we would get our will to receive up to his will to distribute, then we would see a lot more of these things happening in the church. And the reason we're talking about it today is because in our nation right now, there's a lot of unrest in a lot of areas. There's a lot of sickness and disease in a lot of areas. There's a lot of contention between nations and kingdoms. It's going on right now. It's a sign of the end times. But this is the time when the church really, really needs the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not just for our protection, but for the work of the ministry so that the gospel is preached, so that more people will become born again and escape the wrath that is to come. Let's take a look at these gifts for just a moment. And we're going to categorize them. I've done this before. But I, I think the categories are really interesting. There are three gifts, three of these nine gifts, and we're going to divide them into three categories. Three of these nine gifts in category one I call the gifts of speech. And they are prophecy, different kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Now, this may seem a little confusing at first, but I think this will help you. With every gift, 
There is the supernatural flow that is imparted by the Holy Spirit. And there is the natural flow that a Christian can walk in. And you do not need the Holy Spirit. Now, now follow me on this. You do not need the Holy Spirit to impart to you. You just need revelation by the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between walking in the revelation of the Word and prophecy, the gift of prophecy. Now, what do you mean by this? Prophecy is what I'm doing right now. I am in the natural flow of things. I am prophesying to you. That means I am speaking of the oracles of God. I am telling you the things of God. I'm explaining to you the scriptures. That's naturally. How do I do that? I get my Bible. I read my Bible. I pray about Revelation. I might make some notes. I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide me. And I stand up here and I tell you the things of God. Now, you don't have to be a preacher to prophesy. You can do the very same thing on the job at lunch break. All right. You can, you can share with your friends. You say, well, when I share with my friends about the gospel, what am I doing? You're prophesying. But then there is the gift of prophecy. What is that? That is when you are open and ready to receive from the Lord the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and he distributes to you the word of God, and you start speaking and you're thinking to yourself, where did that come from? That's when Jesus said, when you are taken before authorities, don't be concerned about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say in that hour when the time comes. Sometimes you can't figure out what to say in the natural. You don't know what to say in the natural. You're, you're going to even just have a counseling session with somebody in your family, you know. Uh, maybe you're even going to need to talk to your spouse or one of your kids, but you don't know what to say. And you can just say, Lord, guide me on what to say. And he may guide you beforehand through revelation of the word, and you can make some notes. Or you may just not have a clue, and then all of a sudden, have you ever been talking with somebody about the Lord, and all of a sudden you start witnessing in a way, you're thinking, where did this come from? You know, and, and the other person's just kind of blown away. Wow. You see, that, that, that could be the gift of prophecy. Speaking the oracles of God. Wow. But you see the difference. You don't have to wait. You, you never want to get into a situation where you say, well, I'm just going to wait on God. I don't need to study. I don't need to think. Of, no. We still need the natural understanding and revelation. But that supernatural revelation is just amazing. So prophecy is the supernatural utterance of the things of God in a known language. In other words, you speak it in whatever language you speak in. If you're an American, you speak it in American. We're not talking about talking in tongues. The second in the gifts of speech is different kinds of tongues. This is the gift of supernatural utterance by the Holy Spirit in a language that is never learned or spoken by the speaker and not understood by the mind of the speaker nor necessarily understood by the hearer. That's why they call it different kinds of tongues. It happens many different ways. For example, on the day of Pentecost, everyone in the upper room was a believer. They were all born again. Jesus had come back to the earth. Everyone who believed in him was saved. He had met with all of those people at various times. He told them to wait for him. They were waiting in the upper room. And on the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came upon them, and they received some gifts. And one of the gifts they received was the gift of different kinds of tongues. 
Well, how did that manifest? Here's how it manifested. They went out of the upper room speaking in tongues, and there were people from many different nations there, and every single person from every single nation heard them in their own language. The people from Crete heard it in their language. The people from Persia heard it in their language. Everybody heard it in their own language. You say, well, how did that happen? It's the Holy Spirit gift of different kinds of tongues. How do we see it manifest usually today in our society? Someone speaks in an unknown tongue, but then an interpretation comes in, and that is the third of the gift of speeches, the gifts of speech, the interpretation of tongues. It is the supernatural interpretation by the Holy Spirit of the meaning of an utterance in an unknown language. It is in a language of and understood by the hearer. These are things that you do not plan. You do not plan these things. This is not something you say, okay, I'm going to get up here and I'm going to talk in an unknown tongue and then you say this. No, 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 it, it just happens. I don't know if you remember when Lynn Mink, Kenneth Copeland's uh, worship leader, was here back about a year ago. There was a situation where he started singing in an unknown tongue and I interpreted it. I, he didn't know he was going to do what he did. I didn't know I was going to do what I did. It just happened. Why did it just happen? Because we were both receptive to the things of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit distributed the gift of different kinds of tongues upon him, and then the gift of interpretation of tongues upon me. I had no idea what he was saying, but the Holy Spirit kept giving me the words. It's wonderful when it happens. And as a quick example, I'll, I'll just tell you that the first time it ever happened to me, I was actually the worship leader at a church. And somebody got up and they, they spoke in tongues in a church service. And I heard the first 10 or 12 words. I, I heard the first sentence. I heard something about whatever. I, but I heard specifically this, 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 and this, and something about of trees and green and whatever, and I heard these words, but it stopped in mid-sentence. And so I'm, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've got the interpretation of that, but I don't have it all. And so I'm waiting for God to give me the rest of the sentence, and he doesn't do it, and he doesn't do it, and it gets quiet in that building, and it doesn't do it. Well, finally, the, I think it was the pastor, I'm not sure, but I think it was the pastor he stood up and he gave the interpretation. And the first 10 or 12 words were the exact same 10 or 12 words I had. And later I asked the Lord, I said, why was it you gave him the whole thing and you only gave me half a sentence? You gave him about 10 or 12 sentences, you gave me a half a sentence. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart and said, I didn't give him any more than I gave you. He just stepped out in faith. And see, and I've discovered that that's, that's God's way of us not changing what he says. Many times the interpretation of tongues, you only have three or four words ahead of where you're going. And you're thinking, there's been many times I've, I've been giving an interpretation of tongues, and I'm thinking to myself, where am I going with this? My brain is thinking, where am I going with this? You know, what are we talking about? Somehow God always makes it end up right. But you almost have to put your brain in neutral. But the gift of tongues has been so beat down in the modern church because it went away in that transitional period that didn't exist. And people are afraid of it. They think when you're talking about speaking in tongues, you're talking about handling snakes and, and getting weird. No. It, it's not weird. It's, it's did, did you... Read what we read just a few moments ago. It's for the benefit. It benefits us. Well, on the day of Pentecost, how did that benefit anybody? Well, 3,000 people got saved. 
Wouldn't you say that's a benefit? Okay. Well, the uh, next group is what here? The gifts of power. Oh, boy. The gifts of power. What can you say about the gifts of power? We need some power. What did Jesus say in Acts 1-8? One of the last things he said before he ascended. He said, and you shall receive what? Power. Dunamis. Dunamis power. The Greek word there is dunamis. That means that's where we get dynamo and, and dynamite. Those, those words come from it. You shall receive dynamite power. Dynamite power. You shall receive dynamite power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Ah, that's good. The gift of faith. The gift of faith is the supernatural endowment by the Holy Spirit whereby God increases the faith of a believer for a specific purpose and then God honors that purpose miraculously. And every one of these gifts, even the ones we've just talked about, there's a natural flow and there's a supernatural flow. Now, I'm going to back up for just a real quick second on the gift of tongues. Somebody may say, well, what is the natural flow of the gift of tongues? I thought you couldn't speak in tongues unless the Holy Spirit imparted that gift to you. No, that's, that's not true. That's how you receive the gift of different kinds of tongues. But you can pray in the Spirit. You can pray in the Spirit. And when you pray in the Spirit... Who decides if you're going to pray in the Spirit? You do. What's the difference between praying in the Spirit and different kinds of tongues? In praying in the Spirit, you are speaking to God, and you do not need interpretation. God doesn't need an interpreter. He knows what you're saying. So you pray in the Spirit. Why do we do that? Well, Romans 8, 26 and 27 tells us this. That sometimes we, we need to pray, but we don't know how to pray as we ought. And if you don't know how to pray, you don't know what to pray for, you know, maybe you've got a job interview coming up and, you, and you'd like to pray, God, give me the job, but you're not sure he wants you to have the job. So you can't pray, well, God, don't give me the job. You just don't know how to pray. So what do you do? You pray in the Spirit. You pray in tongues. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying concerning my job. I don't understand whether I'm supposed to have it or not. I'm going to go do the interview, but I want to pray. And so you pray in tongues. And the Scripture in Romans 8, 27 says, when you do this, that the Spirit of God prays the will of God through you. And so you're actually praying the will of God. You don't know what you're praying for, but you got the Holy Spirit praying through you, praying the will of God. And then 1 John 5, 14 and 15 kicks in, where it says this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So you're praying according to his will. You don't know what you're praying, but you're praying his will. And then verse 15 says, and then he gives us that request. So what is that? That is praying in the Spirit. That is speaking to God in tongues. The gift of tongues is God speaking to us. You see the difference? One's natural. You can do it on your own. The other one, you can speak for you, but you can't speak for God necessarily. You can't speak His will to you. So, so praying in the Spirit is speaking. Praying to God in tongues does not require an interpretation. The gift of tongues is God speaking to us. It requires an interpretation because we need to know what he said. And who interprets? Well, <sighs> get the book. Okay. The gift of faith. How does faith come? The gift of faith is when all of a sudden you have the ability to pray for something you had no idea that you could believe for, the supernatural gift of faith. I'm not going to go through the entire uh, testimony, but one time I prayed for a man who was extremely crippled, 
the man completely came back to normal in front of my eyes, in front of the eyes of everybody at the conference, completely. He was crippled all, all over, foot backwards, everything, and he came completely normal. Here's the deal. When I went over to pray for him, I walked over as though I had done that every day of my life. I had confidence. I knew he was going to get healed. And I, I just looked at him and I said, sir, what would you like to receive from God? And he said, obviously, he said, I'd like to be healed. And I just reached out and I just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. I didn't get the charismatic grip and shake him around and throw him and he didn't fall down or nothing. I just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And over the period of 20 or 30 seconds, all of his bones started twisting around and, and he became completely normal and walked out of that room normal. Now to everybody at that conference, that was up in Quincy, Illinois, for everybody at that conference, they, they, it looked like I did that every day of the week. Well, I'd been preaching for decades and that was the first time it had ever happened, okay? And I haven't had that happen since. But what I'm saying is, is when I went over there, the gift of faith kicked in. I knew he was going to be healed. I knew he had been healed. All he had to do was receive it. Now, not only was it the gift of faith kicked in, but it was one of the gifts of healings kicked in. And not only was it those two gifts, but there was another gift blended in, and that was the, the gift of miracles. Because healing is a process. It takes time. Miraculous healing is instant. So three gifts blended together. You say, well, what's the natural flow of that? Well, the natural flow of that is we build our faith and belief. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you want to have more faith in your life? You want to have more belief? Get into the word. You need healing in your body? Read scriptures on healing. You need prosperity? Read scriptures on prosperity. You need your broken heart? Healed, read scriptures on relationships. And as this word gets into you, your faith will be built and you can walk in faith and those things can be solved. But there are those times when there is no way in the world, and I'm just being honest with you, there's no way in the world in the natural I would have believed. In fact, when that man first came in the back of the auditorium, I remember th thinking in my heart, don't let that man come forward for healing, Lord, because he was a hopeless case. Foot was completely backwards. He was in his mid-50s or so, looked like he was that way from birth. You say, well, then why don't you just go over to the hospital and just empty out the hospital right now? Because the gift of faith is distributed by the Holy Spirit as he wills. And if the Holy Spirit had not distributed that gift of faith for me that night in Quincy, Illinois, I would have still gone over and prayed for the man using my natural faith. But I can tell you right now, my natural faith wasn't enough. And I would have believed, and I would have got him to believe, and, and I, I believe under the right circumstances he could have been healed. But the gift of faith kicked in. Wow, the gift of faith. That's when you just know that you know that you know. You know that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. I mean, you know that. Okay, so that's one of the gifts of power is faith. The second one is the working of miracles. We need to start believing for miracles. When we start saying things like, well, that's impossible. You know, I, I'd pray for that, but let's get real. That's impossible. We need to start believing for the impossible. What did Jesus say? To him that believes, all things are possible. For everybody? No, to him that believes. What did he say in another place? With God. Nothing is impossible. Whew. The working of miracles is the supernatural intervention into the ordinary course of nature, a temporary suspension of the accustomed order of creation through the Spirit of God. It's when the laws of physics don't work in the natural. See, I believe that the power is available for a person who has a severed arm to have that arm grow back. And I, I can guarantee you 99 and 9 tenths percent of even the church says, 
Well, that's nice, but that's impossible. And because of that type of thinking, which we've been brought up with in the church, the blame actually goes on most ministers because we've been taught that from a kid that the natural laws of physics, science doesn't lie. That's impossible. Well, no. We need to start believing that the impossible is possible. And six, the third in the gifts of power, is the gifts of healings. Wow. There are so many different ways for a person to be healed. You can get wisdom from the Word of God. You know, God can give you wisdom that's natural, and you can get healed that way. You may have had a nervous tick all your life. And one day when you're praying, you hear the Spirit of God say, quit eating sugar. I mean, all I'm saying is, is some things are healed naturally. And the revelation of the Holy Spirit can tell us what to do. I knew of a guy that was having hip trouble, major hip trouble. You know what they traced it down to? He was crossing his legs in school and laying all of his books on his crossed leg. And it was pulling his hip sideways. He said, quit crossing your legs and that'll go away. See, sometimes things are just natural. But sometimes gifts of healings are supernatural. And we need to start believing for these. We need to, we need to start believing that cancer is no different than a toothache. That diabetes is no different than a tick bite. We, we, need, we need to quit saying this. We can pray for this, but boy, this is moving up the list. That's too difficult to pray for. Well, Sometimes that's where the gifts of healings come in. And you know, there's so many different types of ways to get healed. Think about this. Jesus never prayed for anybody to get healed. And that's all we do, basically. Well, are we doing wrong? No, we're not doing wrong because in James, Pastor James said, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint with oil and, and lay hands on him. And the prayer prayer, prayer of faith will heal the sick and the Lord will raise them up. So praying for, for the church, praying for people is one of the ways. But there's a lot of different ways. Remember, Jesus, sometimes he, he stuck his finger in their ears. Sometimes he, he spit on mud and put it in their eyes. You know, can, can you see if that happened today? You know, we see some preachers, you know, spit on the mud and put it in a blind person's eye and, and, and that person gets healed, and they'd, they'd start a church out of it called the, the First Church of the Spitters. That's the only way to get healed. You've got to spit in mud, you know. No, there's gifts, different, different ways to be healed. Wow. All right, and these last three gifts are the Word of Wisdom, the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. Oh, I wish I had about 20 more hours here. Um, the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge. The natural flow of the word of wisdom is just wisdom. In James it says, does any of you lack wisdom? Let him ask of God. God gives you wisdom. Read the Word. You'll, you'll attain wisdom by reading the Word. But then there's that word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Let me give you the definitions here. The word of wisdom is the supernatural revelation by the Spirit of God concerning the divine purpose and will of God. 
And the word of knowledge is the supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts that are from the mind of God. And I know, I'll be like Brother Hagin. I've, I've told this story so many times that you guys probably can tell it better than me. But it's, it's my best illustration on the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. They asked me to speak to the business people up here at the bank in Camdenton. It was back when it was the First National Bank. And so I'm downstairs speaking to the business people. Now, they knew it was going to be uh, flavored with, uh, with things about Jesus. You know, it wasn't just a business meeting, but it was basically giving my uh, testimony how you can be in business and still be a Christian and probably some of the same kind of stuff that Chris Stevens does all the time with Christians, Christian Motorcycle Association, you know. Uh, sometimes people think you can't be in business and be a Christian, you know, but, but you can, you know. So I'm down there at the First National Bank in the basement, and so I'm done, and I said, Is, if anybody needs prayer, just come on up. Well, this l local business lady in town, she had a little shop down on South High or uh, North Highway 5, she came forward and she said, uh, I want you to pray for me that I'll quit smoking. And I said, uh, well, uh, I'm not the one smoking. You're the one smoking. So here's the deal. You, you pray it and I'll agree with you. I'll add my faith to yours. So it was a little prayer time. And she turned and she started to walk away. And she's walking back through. Everybody was, it was kind of like this. There's just one row down the middle and Everybody was still seated and kind of watching. And she's starting to walk away. And wouldn't you know it, the Holy Spirit imparted the gift of knowledge. And all of a sudden, I knew something. I had no way of knowing. And I said, ma'am, she turns around. Because I'd never met her before. I'd, I knew she had a store in town, but I, I didn't, didn't know her. I said, ma'am, uh, those cigarettes that you have hidden in the vase by your couch, and those cigarettes that you have in the canister in the left cabinet above your sink. And I named the third place, and I can't remember now where the third place was. But I named three specific places in her house where she had hidden cigarettes. Now, she could have looked back at me and said, I don't get it. I don't have a vase by the couch. Or she could have said, I don't have a canister above the sink to the left. She could, I mean, when you operate in the gift of, of the word of knowledge. You're stepping out there because, you, you know, you're saying stuff you don't know. But she didn't say that. She turned around and she says, but I can't. I, and, and, oh, I, and she says, yes, and then the word of wisdom kicked in. Now, the word of wisdom is what to do to get set free. And she goes, yes. And I said, if you'll take the cigarettes out of that vase beside the couch and take the cigarettes out of the canister above the sink to the left and the third place, and don't burn them, but just crumble them up, and throw them away, you'll be set free from smoking. And that's the place where she could have said, I don't have a vase. But she didn't say that. She said, I can't do that. And I said, why not? And she said, because I've hidden them there with a purpose. When I start smoking again, cigarettes are expensive. She, had, she was already planning on smoking again once she got delivered from it. Are you following me? And the reason she had hid those cigarettes is because she knew that if she tried to quit, she would always have a backup pack someplace, you know. But I've often thought about that in the years that have passed, how the Spirit of God the word of knowledge gave me information I didn't know. I didn't even know if the lady had a house. But gave me specific, you know, now you can say, I've got a, a, a word of knowledge from the Lord. As the trees are green and the sky is blue and as the wind blows from the east to the west and the leaves are on the tree, so shall the wind be. What did I just say? Nothing. <laughs> and I've heard a lot of nothing words of wisdom and words of knowledge in my life. But when 
the word of knowledge is actually working. It's for the benefit, and it usually links up with the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge reveals something that's unknown, and then the word of wisdom tells you how to solve the problem. See, and how to solve the problem was the Spirit of God had it worked out. If she would have just taken those cigarettes and crumbled them up and flushed them down the toilet or threw them out the window or something, she would have been delivered. But it exposed the reality that she didn't want to be delivered. She was just making a show of it. All right. And the last of the uh, nine gifts is discerning of spirits. This is being able to see into the spirit world and understand the personality and or the purpose of a spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will distribute this gift to you and you don't even realize it. But have you ever been in a situation where you knew that you knew that you knew that there was a demonic spirit behind what was going on? You walk into the room, you walk in the room, and you know that you know. And you're thinking, I don't have any evidence. You know, I shouldn't be thinking this bad thing about these people. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be thinking that. No. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit imparting to you the supernatural discerning of spirits. See, who does the, the enemy work through? He works through the same avenue that the Spirit of God works through. People. And you need to know. See, sometimes there's a, the full manifestation of the visualization of a demonic spirit. I've had that happen once in my life. Uh, and then sometimes it's you just know that you know that you know. You know, I, uh, I walked into a, a business deal many years ago. Uh, we were, I hate, hate to put it this way, but I, I don't think if we got a million dollars it would have helped. We were so far, uh, we had a factory, and this factory was so far in debt we'd had a man embezzle $140,000 a month for two years before it was caught. And when it was caught, then the vultures came in <coughs> and uh, they were wanting to take the, the business and all the land. And gas was discovered on the land. It was out of state. Gas was discovered on the land. And, and a vice president of a major company that's advertised on television all the time and president of a yacht company and the president of a bank all conspired to... Uh, to steal this property, which, by the way, the end of the story is they didn't, and we survived and did well. But uh, there was a, a businessman, a Christian businessman. He claimed he was a Christian businessman, and his what he did, uh, we were sent to him, and he got companies, Christian businesses, that were not doing too well. He got them out of trouble. He got them out of trouble. And he did that by buying their companies, and then turning them around. So we were told. I remember we went to his house. We were going to sign the papers. There were documents. And uh, all we had to do, I just had to sign the papers, sign the papers, and all of our problems went away. And I'm getting ready to sign the papers, and I hear the Spirit of God say, don't do it. And my brain in the natural is thinking, if I don't do it, we're going to go bankrupt. If I do it, we're going to be doing great. That's the way it looked in the natural. But in the realm of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, don't do it. I laid the pencil down. I think you were on the way back from Kansas City. You would taken the kids up to see the Harlem Globetrotters or something. And, and you were on your way back, and I was at the office getting ready to sign the paper. Well, I didn't sign it. And end of the story, we came out fine. But here's something that's interesting. That man that helped out Christian businesses was a charlatan. We found out later he had stolen, he had stolen many Christian businesses. He had bought them for a, a penny on the dollar. 
he had stolen them because the fine print in that stack of papers was basically he's just giving him all the assets. You're, give, you're giving him everything. But that's not the way he presented it. In his office, he had Christian tapes. He had one entire wall of Christian cassette tapes of sermons by ministers that we liked. I mean, he played the part good. But he was a crook. And the only thing that saved us was discerning of spirits. So we have these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit available for the church. And uh, I just wanted you all to know they're available to you. And you don't have to be in a church service. You, you, can, you can be in your home. You, you can be anywhere. Listen, one of the best guides you can have in business is the Holy Spirit. And you say, well, there's business decisions we need to make. Well, pray in the Spirit. Romans 8, 26, 27 says you pray in the Spirit, you're praying the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says if you pray the will of God, you get it. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? It is. So let's don't complicate it. Let's, let's be ready to receive. Let's all stand up. We're going to make a confession. And I'm going to ask that you all pray for me tomorrow. I've got a, this time tomorrow, I'll be in Punta Gorda, Florida. Because tomorrow, tomorrow night I'm speaking at the International Convention of Faith Ministries, Monday and Tuesday night. And then uh, I'm flying back on Wednesday, and then I'm driving to Kansas City on Wednesday because my mother is having surgery, a procedure, heart procedure, on Thursday at St. Luke's. So that's your prayer assignment for this week, all right? Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I confess, I confess. with my mouth, with my mouth. And, with my and with my full heart that I am ready and willing, ready and willing to, receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit at any time, at any, time, at any, place, at any place that the Holy Spirit desires. Can you believe that? Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the miracles that are going to take place this week. I thank you for the supernatural revelation, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge that's going to take place this week. I thank you, Father, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that you empowered the church with your power so that we could do the work of your ministry until your son returns. We thank you, Father. And I speak the blessing upon these, your people. Guide them, honor them. And they just spoke these words, Father, that they will receive your spirit at any time, at any place that you desire. Fulfill that in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah.